Hey folks, it's a Friday night here on the Outpost Unknown YouTube channel, and once again we are exhuming the X-Files. Now last week we had an all-time banger of an episode, Ice, which was the homage to John Carpenter's The Thing, and now we're going to yo-yo back to one of the all-time worst episodes, in my opinion, <laughs> Space. My name is Matthew, and I'm once again joined by my great friend Jeremy. Hey everybody. Now before we dive into space, which uh, I don't know if I have a whole lot to say about this episode, but we'll see <laughs> as we roll through it. I do want to give a, a super shout out to a new subscriber we got, Sean T, subscribed to Outpost Unknown uh, based on our Jersey Devil episode that just dropped. So thank you, Sean T. Uh, slowly but surely, X-Files fans are sort of joining us on our journey, and we are happy to have you along for the ride each Friday night. All right, Jeremy. Um, we we agreed that ice was pretty great last week. Um, we're we're heading into space on a high. What uh, what is this one all about? <laughs> okay, so, you can just tell how sad I am in my voice. I'm like, <laughs> what's weird is this time around, I took notes and I'm looking over my notes and I find that I have a lot to say about an episode that was very okay. Very good, good. So. What it starts out as is that we have a space program. We're looking at Mars, like the stinger right before the episode begins. They use all of these facts about Mars and how what little we know about it. And then they throw up the face of Mars, which was a very real thing back then. Oh, yeah. Even Huge the back then. There's a lot of promise to how this episode starts. And then it just almost immediately falls on it. <laughs> yes. So what we have is a guy that was part of one of the Gemini program, I believe, previously. Yeah. And I think they were hinting that they were around Mars when he got attacked by some kind of ghost. Like you see a plant or a, an astronaut in a few different flashbacks throughout this, this episode uh, around a red planet instead of it being the Earth or the moon, which I found weird. But they never said he went to Mars. But they anyway. Uh, yeah. He gets attacked by a ghost while doing a spacewalk. He gets inhabited by said ghost. He brings said ghost back, and then hijinks ensue in the future. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's a new crew that's going up to deliver a payload, right? We assume it's some sort of military government payload or whatever. And uh, there's a woman in NASA who reaches out to Mulder and Scully, and she's like, "Look." I think someone's trying to sabotage this mission here because they, they try to launch the, the shuttle once. Cause the, the whole thing is like, it's the space shuttle program. And they put a very heavy emphasis on if this goes wrong and something horrible and tragic happens and the government's just literally going to yank all funding from NASA and the space program will be completely, you know, destroyed at that point in time. I don't necessarily buy that sort of premise, but we roll with it. And, and yeah, there's, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, the, the main dude who is uh, sort of like the astronaut, the, the head the guy there. Yeah. At, at mission command, but he had previously survived sort of this, this incident with these weird, I guess, face on Mars ghosts that were flown through. The, <laughs> I, I don't even understand what, what this episode was really trying to say, honestly. Um, but yeah, like you said, uh, Things go wrong. Uh, the The guys get up there, and uh, they're running out of oxygen, and and we have to sort of, you know, save them from from mission control and get the colonel to sort of, um, you know, he's the only one in the world who knows what it's like to go through that that experience and survive up there. So he's got to bring the astronauts through. So yeah, I mean, well, since you have a lot of notes, I'll just turn it over to you. Um, what, what do you got? What, what do you want to discuss on this episode? Well, you have the beginning of the episode, and you got to keep in mind you don't buy the plausibility that they could pull, you know, all of their funding. But this was just what five years after the Challenger went up. Like, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Like it was eighty-eight to ninety-three, ninety-four time frame around when this was. I think eight. Challenger blew up in eighty-six, didn't it? Oh, I thought it was eight. Yeah, well, you're right. So, but still, kind of. I mean, it was fresh on everybody's mind. Yeah, and people, we were, ev everyone was worried and concerned whenever the space shuttle would launch. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And then, but we were so like this episode tries to open with so much credibility about NASA, and I kept looking at all of this stock footage and stuff, and I'm like. Do you remember how proud we used to be of our space program? Like, oh yeah, every time a shuttle went up, it was a huge deal. Yeah, 
Absolutely. And I remember being in an elementary school because if at 86, I will probably would either kindergarten or first grade. I still remember when the Challenger blew up and it was a huge deal, like a huge deal. Um, so much so that I still remember that sort of moment in time from when I was very, very little and slowly, but surely over the years, we've just sort of not cared. Maybe we take NASA for granted now, but we just don't really care about what these astronauts are doing like we should, in my opinion. Sure. So uh, we have a two week launch window. We're going to, or we're stressed to get out there because they have to deliver a payload. And they mention that over and over again, deliver the payload. They never say really what it is, what we're throwing yeah. up there in space, but we're going to put these astronauts as asses on the line with a ghost attacking their space or, their, or the shuttle in order to get this thing out there. Um, they get, end up go or Mulder and Scully end up getting approached by some gal that's uh, co the communications director of the program, and she says that this part is faulty and everybody knows about it, but we're sending them up anyway. So Mulder and Scully use the loosest connection humanly possible that I've seen yet. That this is like an X file just to get out there and do it and. You kind of see that Mulder is like he used to want to be an astronaut. He knows who this colonel is. Yeah. He's familiar with him. His mission. He's like a, he's like that. a hero to this to to Mulder. When he was a sure. kid, he looked up to this guy. And his interactions. One thing I did like about this episode is his interactions with this colonel and how he basically he almost can't even speak in front of him because he's so nervous and he's like, oh, it's such an honor. It reminded me of that time when I met John Carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> where I just couldn't speak. I'm like, oh my God, you're so great. Yeah, so I did appreciate that aspect of it. And then well, and to, on the opposite side of that, Scully could not care less. Like right. they, they, they sweet talk themselves out to, you know, going out to mission control to watch the launch. And it, you see, like they, they show Mulder and Scully like three different times. He's just grinning ear to ear. And she could not be... <laughs> like, it's it's so weird to me too because she's you know a scientist and you would think that she would be interested in nasa and this kind of stuff no no she has, she gives no shits <laughs> she doesn't even want to be there she wants nothing to do with any of this so they they have this part they want to investigate the legitimacy of this communications director saying that this part was bad and they run into this one guy who says there's it's like seventeen thousand people working on 17,000 different problems to make sure that this bird goes up. And I'm, I'm looking at them and they're, they're talking to like two people about this part. So I was like, okay, of the 17,000 people working on the shuttle, you guys just happen to stumble into the right people to talk about this specific part. Like, Oh, okay. Uh, you gotta, gotta roll with it. They have a limited, limited budget for extras. <laughs> then they, they, they bounce after the, the, the launch goes and the communications direct, like while the shuttle is in the air, the communications director is married to one of the, the captain of the, yeah, the yeah. mission in space. And so she's, she, you know, obviously very concerned about it. And she Lee, like they put the shuttle into space initially. And then her and the commander just immediately leave. She goes and hauls ass after Mulder and Scully, and he goes home and like grabs a bottle of vodka yeah. out of his fridge and just gets <laughs> shit faced immediately. So now we should we should point out that that this episode was written by Chris Carter, and as we go deeper and deeper into the X Files seasons, Chris Carter because we praise him right for for the pilot episode in Deep Throat that kind of initial one two punch where he wrote the episodes and it got everybody excited by the X-Files. But as we move further and further along, Chris Carter's writing skills seem to deteriorate. Like he did Jersey Devil. Um, we weren't super enthused with his decision-making on that. He did this. He does Fire, which is going to be in an episode coming up as well. So Chris Carter's track record is kind of on a downward trajectory already <laughs> in season one. So she, they go out, she fetches Mulder and Scully because something is happening with their telemetry and it, you know, it's immediately something is going wrong. So they have this like car chase scene going back to the place where they're, oh. they're following this gal. 
God. And there's just this fucking torrential downpour, and she is hauling ass through it. Now, I don't know if you, well, I, I know you don't drive, but you've been out on the interstate where there's yeah. a, been a real bad rainstorm. Maybe there's some hail coming down. You can't see, but like 20 feet uh-huh. in front of the car. It's fucking scary. Yeah. You you slow that car down, if not find a place to pull over and stop. Well, they're driving through that. And she's just apparently got her foot on the fucking floor. Like she's just going. And then this awful ghost <laughs> like shows up and she just immediately flips the car. Like the, and then the ghost is the face on Mars. Yeah. That, just that, over and over it again. just goes through like the windshield, whatever. This this okay, so that the 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 effects in this episode are trash. They are so so bad. And I was looking up some some facts about this and apparently the effects team only had 4 days to work on the special effects of this show and that's probably why they look so stupid. Uh, <laughs> it looks so bad. But the thing that bothered me about that crash was was not not even the bad CG face on Mars ghost. It was the fact that she's in a torrential downpour, like you say. She crashes, and then the, literally the next shot is Mulder and Scully pulling up, and there's no more rain. Yeah. The, the ground's not even wet. <laughs> there's, like, nothing. I'm like, God, the continuity in this is so bad. The Oh, man, they really botched this. <laughs> Yeah. And then they just like, get me out. Get, they pull her out of the car. She's got a slightly bloodied head, despite having flipped one of those old, like late eighties, early nineties cars that had none of the safety features that modern cars had. Like she would have been like, split in half or something. Yeah. But, all right. All right. So we get back in the car. We're still not sure why the ghost attacked her. <laughs> but the ghost is fucking with this spaceship, but then the shuttle, but then he comes back to Earth just to run this chick off the road. It would have made sense if there was some contention between her and the colonel. Well, do, we, do we know if it's an actual ghost or is it like some weird alien thing? Oh, I have no idea. I, we, we don't know. Like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, we don't know anything because I'm like watching this and it, it also doesn't help the production value of this that they constantly intersperse this stock footage of spacewalks. It looks like it was taken from the 1960s. It just Mm -hmm. looks awful compared to, you know, the modern filmmaking of, you know, 1993 when this aired, I think it aired on, yeah, November 12th, 1993. The juxtaposition of them throwing in so much stock footage uh, and according to my research on this episode, it was, Hey, they needed to save money because they went way over budget on ice so they decided to throw in tons of stock footage so they wouldn't have to do any effects with like space shuttles and stuff. But then they built the actual command center set. And apparently that went way over budget. And still they went over budget on this episode. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you guys need to do better with your money and right. your funds. I mean, it, no kid. Every scene that we had the colonel where the ghost was both leaving his body and then coming back into it. And they're like, hey, uh, did you really violently and awkwardly contort your face on this camera for however long we're going to point it at you? Just so we can like, it's so horrible. But if you think about it, like this guy had to really, really contort his face to make some of the effects work. It just, oh, it looks like shit. It does. And what's even crazier about this whole like weird facial contortion thing is I thought initially when I was watching it, that was just for the audience. Like the audience, it's the cue that the audience knows that they're, that the ghost or alien or whatever is inside this guy. But no, they go out of their way to show that Mulder and Scully see this exact same thing that we see. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Because if I saw that, I think I'd immediately believe that there's some sort of weird thing <laughs> happening with this guy. But then they go on with their merry way and they never bring it up again. Sure. I think Scully's like, oh my God, when she sees his face doing that weird thing, and then it's never mentioned again the rest of the episode. <laughs> Bad so we, writing, Chris. <laughs> we get back to Houston. They find out that t- the telemetry is shot. The Whatever calculations fl- or you, or automatic pilot flips the thing over so that, or that the bird isn't facing towards the sun so it doesn't cook the astronauts while it's in orbit. It's fucked up. So they go to a, a server room. Because they, they, they're being told that the, the attack is happening within 
their area. So they go into this data center. They draw guns. If they shoot in this server room, like they'll no doubt destroy a computer responsible for keeping <laughs> this fucking shuttle in orbit. Um, they never run into the ghost in there or this whatever the fuck it is, but they run into some nerd. Yeah, and, he's just like, hey, I'm 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 just here. <laughs> and then that's when I noticed that Mulder's job throughout this entire thing, it's the third time, I think, by the time this happens where he, I think he explains telemetry to Scully. And there's all of these mini little scenes where we, I guess they just assume that the audience watching is just a bunch of idiots. So we need to know what they're talking about when they're specifically talking about like space stuff. But like five different times, Mulder turns to Scully and just mansplains space to her. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, yes. it's so jarring. It is. It's like, all right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because what there's something about the heat shield, right? Like they're in the command center and they're talking something about the heat shield, and then like Scully's, she just looks so lost. And yeah, you're right. Mulder turns like this is what the heat shield is. And this is exactly what it does. And then she's just like, oh, okay. <laughs> just like, and then it's so out of character. They do it again. Yeah, it's so out of character. It's weird. But they, they get it figured out, sort of. Uh, the commander, for some reason, or sorry, the, the communications, they, like, they're talking to the colonel. He gets it figured out, but she's arguing that if they go manual, they'll lose telemetry, which they already lost anyway, and the guys were cooking. But he makes the call. They get the, or they, they get the thing flipped over, going into manual, mo- or letting the pilots do it manually, and then it's time to deliver the pay. Yep. Um, One cool thing about this is I do like Mulder's sort of stance that because everyone thinks the colonel's going batshit nuts and that the colonel is the one responsible for for doing all this sabotaging of of the space shuttle and stuff. And Mulder's whole point of view is like, hey, man, this guy's a hero. He would never do something to kill his fellow astronauts. And it's Mulder because like when the colonel's on the ground, like contorting his face and stuff like that, Mulder almost kills the guy. Like he, he's like got his finger up. He's like, "Hey man, focus. Tell me what needs to be done." And everyone's like, "You're killing him. His blood pressure is like at almost 200. He's going to go into cardiac arrest." Uh, but Mulder believes be- believes the colonel when no one else will, which I thought was a was a nice touch for for his character being so, I guess, enamored with this astronaut. Well, I think. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he was pushing him beyond. Or he he understands the rigorous training and focus that these guys or these astronauts have to have in order to endure the things that they do. Like they put them in those centrifuge machines, yeah, and spin them up to like plus nine Gs, and they're supposed to remain, you know, figure out how to how to work their body, how to how to deal with the stresses of being in space. And that guy had been on many, many, many. So I think maybe Mulder used that opportunity to be like, okay, everybody else is trying to take care of him, but I know that this guy can focus long enough to just give me some clue about what these guys need to do. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I I did like that scene a little bit, but man, that was... (sighs) Anyway. um, We get some weak-ass ghost like attacking the (laughs) ship special effects. They just draw like airy cotton on the out or superimpose it over the top of stock footage of a shuttle. They're like there's some there's some banging on the outside of the ship. And like, well, don't it's worry so about bad. it. It's so We're bad. losing oxygen up here. Oh God. Everything that's just going wrong can't or that can go wrong does. And they have they have no money to actually so one one thing like I would have loved that could have helped this episode out a little bit. And I realized they had no money to do this, but to actually show us the astronauts on this shuttle, like at least an interior. And if we could have had some back and forth between, you know, what the astronauts are going through up there when they're seeing like the ghost, because they mentioned like, we're seeing the weird stuff out here. What's going on? We don't, we don't get to see any of that really. Um, I, I wanted to see it from the astronauts perspective. Like what are they going through? You could have written this episode in such a way that it added a lot more drama 
and you wouldn't even necessarily need to have all the bad CG or whatever effects that they had on there. It could have just been the tense, uh, stress-filled, um, you know, things that the astronauts are going through as their oxygen is depleting, sure. trying to figure out a way, and then Mulder and Scully and the Colonel, all that stuff down there. You could have done a cool episode with this story, I think. I, or no, I agree with you. And I think that they had the acting talent to pull something like that off. It's just, this is what we got. Yeah, they got some bad words on the page. <laughs> so ultimately they get the guys to come back um, or they get or the colonel like gets the ghost back in or alien, whatever possessed him back inside of his body. He goes to the hospital. They get the shuttle back. It was it was kind of goofy, like. They bring the shuttle back. They have to change where it's or the trajectory it's coming in on. So that would drastically change where it was going to land. And then they're like, all right, well, they're coming through the atmosphere. So that's a two minute blackout. And I yeah. think we had about five seconds before that commander, the the comms lady is like, hey, where are you guys at? <laughs> I know. What are you doing? It's like. Be patient. They said two minutes, five seconds ago. Yeah, they they tried to build in. This is where Chris Carter tried to build in that suspense moment, right? You know, we've seen Apollo thirteen and and stuff like that. Those movies where you go down to mission control and there is that communication blackout, and we we aren't exactly sure whether or not the astronauts got the telemetry instructions in time or if they're going to burn up and, you know, it's going to be a horrible tragedy. Of course, we know watching this episode, that's not going to happen. They're not going to destroy the space shuttle on this. So it just feels like the tension cannot be there. <laughs> like it's impossible to manufacture, even though they, they, Chris Carter attempted to in this little 30 second window. But it, of course, they they land. They all of a sudden they're calling back into Houston. You know, crack open some. You know where to eat in in Albuquerque. Then everybody's <laughs> cheering. There's this really awkward moment where they they immediately stand up and hold or Mulder and the 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 comms chick who's married just embrace each other. <laughs> like all the ladies like Mulder. We're gonna see that in subsequent episodes too. Sure. I just didn't understand because they did not have that relationship yeah. at all. And Scully cracks a smile too. She's she's happy at least that they successfully got them landed. Okay, cracking a smile and <laughs> hugging a complete fucking stranger. Two different things <laughs> like that. And then we go to the hospital, uh the or the the colonel his he realizes that the the entity whatever it is is about to start leaving his body. He's like, "No." And he <laughs> jumps through and this is a hell of a leap by the way because the way the camera work works he, he's like 13 floors up on the hospital he goes through the window in his room which doesn't bounce off of it like he probably should have because that glass is pretty tough but he goes through it so far that the camera like it follows through his eyes like a first person perspective all the way to the ground he's in the middle of the fucking intersection next to the hospital <laughs> Like he had to le clear that window by a good twenty five feet, just straight out. Uh, it's ridiculous. he sacrifices himself to. I I don't know how it was going to stop the ghost that was trying to leave his body anyway. But okay, yeah, I it's never explained. We get no information. We just have to roll with it. But at the very end of it, like it, it goes, it, the final shot goes, it, it's Mulder. He's going through some files or whatever. He seems kind of bummed that this Colonel killed himself, but whatever. But they do at the very end of this episode, have one of the greatest lines that I've seen in it yet. And I'm quoting, we send men up into space to unlock the doors of the universe. And we don't even know what's behind them. I love that line. That's cool. That's a good line. Yeah, I mean, Chris Carter wrote one great line in this episode. <laughs> he did. It was. It's worth the, it's suffering the whole thing just for Fox <laughs> delivering that one in the end. There's there's another thing I put in my notes here for this episode. There is some terrible ADR in that scene where <laughs> where Mulder is in the. 
I don't know, the computer room and they find that dude in there. There's a, there's like a wide shot and, and Mulder's doing like a voiceover. If you look at him, his lips are not even moving. You could tell it's, it's so clearly ADR and it's like they were trying to fix stuff in post or put information into post or something for the audience. It's so awful. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. Uh, looking up some of the information on this, this, this episode was universally hated, um, and Chris Carter said it was his least liked episode. So nobody on the show enjoyed this episode at all. Um, they all thought it was bad, so it's not just us. And um, I, I mentioned that the effects artist had four days to, to complete it. Chris Carter said he was inspired to write this after reading about the news of the face on Mars, an instance of pareidolia wherein a mound in the Cydonia region of Mars was taken to resemble a human face. And I remember seeing that on the cover of Weekly World News all the time, like the face on Mars and and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. So it was in the zeitgeist. Um, Carter said that he blames uh, uh, this episode on the infeasibility of showing the astronauts in the stricken shuttle which is something that I mentioned that would have been better, requiring additional exposition to explain their situation, which is something that you noted (laughs) as you watched it, and something he found he could not manage on an eight-day television budget. So he he said that this episode suffered from being filmed shortly after the pilot episode. So this was right after the pilot actually aired. They filmed this, and the crew was completely overwhelmed by the input, noting that everything was happening all at once. And Ed Lautner, the guy who played the colonel, he he had a quote when someone asked him about it. He says, "I don't really have a lot to say about that, except I thought it. I did. A, I thought I did a nice job, and it was very nice working up there in Vancouver with David Duchovny and Jillian Anderson. And that's it. <laughs> he had no more thoughts to say. So it's bad. It's real, hope, real bad. I hope he learned his lesson about gluing a rug to his head because <laughs> thirty seconds he appeared in this episode. It's like Jesus." Christ. Christ, what is that thing? <laughs> you have any other comments? Any any final thoughts on space? I hate it. Uh, you know, I I was thinking that after we get through like this this first season, we can do an episode where we put like our top five best episodes and top five worst of the season. It's going to be hard to top this as the worst of the season for me. I hated it. See. <sighs> I I've I've watched this twice now. Once a couple of weeks back when I I caught it for the first time since my youth and yeah, I thought it was kind of a stinker, but I still enjoyed parts of it here and there. When I had to sit down and take notes about it, stuff to talk about, I was like, man, this fucking episode sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. But hey, this is kind of like uh, you know every every. Well, I won't say every, but let's say the vast majority of television shows back in this day and age where you're getting 24 episodes in the season, you're going to have some duds. You're going to have some clunkers. The thing is, are they going to be able to bounce back? You know, we had an amazing episode last week. Now we have an awful episode this week. Next week, we're going to we're gonna go back to the tried and true alien well, and we're going to take a look at an episode called Fallen Angel, episode 10. So stay tuned. Come back to Outpost Unknown next Friday, and we're going to talk about, hopefully, a bounce-back episode. See you then.